Hey guys, thanks for joining me here on another episode of Crossing the Line. I'm your host, Isaac King. We'll get straight into today's top story. Let's go. PayPal pulls back, says it won't fine customers $2,500 for misinformation after backlash. They got caught out the other day after releasing their new terms of service, saying that they were going to fine people $2,500 for spreading what they would call misinformation. Now, we know PayPal uh, cuts off and bans people from using their uh, service if they don't if they don't agree with what you have to say. They've done it to many a person already. Uh, we'll get into the story here. PayPal has backtracked on a published policy that would have fined users $2,500 for spreading misinformation, claiming the update had gone out in error. Yeah, because you fucked up and you sent it out when you weren't supposed to. And that was more of a quiet thing you were going to, you know, implement an AUP notice recently went out an error that includes incorrect information. PayPal is not finding people for misinformation and this language was never intended to be inserted in our policy. Our teams are working to correct our policy pages. We're sorry for the confusion this has caused, a spokesperson said, told, uh, told the National Review in a written statement. There's no confusion. They were going to fine you. They were going to take money off of you. If you did or said something, tweeted something, produced some sort of media, or did anything that they deemed as misinformation, who the fuck is PayPal to deem what's misinformation or not? They have nothing to do with it. It's none of their business. The course reversal comes after the policy changes have started to attract media scrutiny as well as criticism on Twitter. Former PayPal president David Marcus even blasted the company over the implication that it could seize customers' money for finding their views objectionable. It is hard for me to openly criticise a company I used to love and gave so much to, but PayPal's new AUP goes against everything I believe in, the cryptocurrency entrepreneur said on Saturday. A private company now gets to decide to take your money if you say something they disagree with. Insanity. Tech titan Elon Musk reply, uh, replied, agreed in a comment. They got thousands of likes. The policy update had appeared to authorise the company to pull significant sums of money out of the accounts of users who spread misinformation among other newly listed offences. The new conditions were scheduled to be added to the restricted activity section of the PayPal user agreement, effective November 3rd. The Daily Wire first opened, uh, reported changes included prohibitions on the sending, posting or publication of any messages, content or materials that promote misinformation, while the prior policy already forbade hate, intolerance and discrimination. The new one would have explicitly applied to all specific pr to protected groups and individuals or groups based on protected characteristics. Identities under this umbrella included race, religion, gender, or gender identity, and sexual orientation. I guarantee what's not included under there is straight white male or even straight white female. Guaranteed that's not included in that one. The firm's current rule book doesn't list these terms. It's unclear whether PayPal will also pull back these specific prohibitions on discriminatory language or if it's only scrubbing the misinformation clause. Breaking the rule against misinformation and hate speech may subject you to damages, including liquidated damages of $2,500 US per violation, which may be direct uh, debited directly from your PayPal account or company it had originally warned. In a user agreement, account holders accepted the and attest that the penalty is presentably and reasonable minimum estimate of PayPal's actual damages due to the expense the firm incurs by accounting for the violations as well as the damages to its reputation. What a load of shit. They want to fine you for apparent damages they might ensue if you say a naughty word or uh, say something that goes against the zealotry group think that they have uh, been promoting for the last six to eight years. PayPal was founded by Peter Thiel, who was investi invested in a number of GOP raising stars and conservative business ventures. eBay acquired the company in 2002 and has managed it since. In recent years, PayPal has been known to censor or deplatform organizations or individuals for certain political commentary, particularly that which is considered right wing. It has recently banned gays against groomers, a group comprised of LGBT identifying people that claims the core attention to the sexualization and medicalization of children via gender ideology and the transgender movement. Minutes later, PayPal subsidiary Venmo reported barred and reportedly barred and 
the organization from access if evolutionary biologist colin wright and journalist ian miles chang who regularly expose the dangers of transgenderism for minors have also been removed this is their this is their agenda to stop anyone talking out or anyone changing their mind on their group think they don't want you to think for yourself they don't want you to say anything that they don't agree with and they certainly aren't going to help you by letting you use their platform or letting you use their service like paypal now there's other ones popping up that you can use the rumble uh twitter you can go to things like getter or truth social i don't think truth social has been rolled out across the world yet just in the us and i don't see that um happening anytime soon now paypal is obviously going to be getting dragged through twitter dragged through the internet at this point it's disgusting that they can think they can ban anyone for saying things they don't want and not to mention just banning you from using their service but take money from you that is your money it's your money it's your money you earned your money you earned through a deal or whether it's um you know been transferred to you for whatever reason it's not their business it's got nothing to do with what you're getting money for and they cannot find you they're not a government authority a lot of government authorities shouldn't be able to fucking find you either but when these companies get together like uh what happened with a trucker convoy in canada where they started seizing their bank accounts shutting down their phones um going to the police were going to their houses pe police were going to their these people's families just because they were protesting they were protesting peacefully too no one was riding no one was hurting anyone they were just parked in the middle of the street honking their horns which apparently got turned into uh that was a terrorist attack as uh dictator trudeau uh liked to call them over there but paypal's just another notch in their belt now these people here are going to run. That's stealing by any definition. That's stealing. Correct. That is 100% correct. You get a lot for that. Now, what are, you, what are you going to do about it? You've got to stop using PayPal if you're starting up a business. If you're using anything, you can't use PayPal. You have to go to a different source. There's a lot of uh, different sources that popping up out there. But things like PayPal um, is another attack vector they can get you with. If they don't like what you're saying or don't like what you're doing, they will shut you down financially. Where is this going? What, what is their end goal? Their end goal is to make everyone think the same, talk the same, don't think anything outside the box so they can bring in what they did with COVID. It'll happen again, whether it's because of World War Three that's kicking off in Ukraine at the moment, especially after that... Uh, bridge blast and Nord Stream 2 getting blown up it's just escalating daily whether they're going to shut us down and lock it down in their houses because of that or it's because of a new COVID variant I don't know but we have to start building a second society where we can function where we can express our values talk about things that we want to talk about make things that we want to make you can't watch a movie anymore without it being woke. But they're taking everything from people who think differently to them because they control the space. So now we need to build and make our own space. We need to create a second economy. We need to be able to make secondary platforms and an economy like with things like Mines, Rumble, uh, Getter, so that we not getting censored every time we open our mouths. I've been banned on TikTok already, just posting short clips of this show. And they're saying that uh, it's hate speech or it's violence against um, minorities like this for just saying the truth that a man is born a man and will always be a man and same with a woman. There's only two genders and you say that on TikTok and apparently that's uh, harming people. Now, maybe if you get harmed by hearing the truth, you should find a hole and crawl into it and stay in that fucking hole because the world is pretty big out there and it's a scary fucking place. And if you get hurt from someone saying something you don't like, which makes you feel oppressed or upset or sad or triggered or emotional, maybe it's not for you. Maybe you need to go back and crawl into your mother's basement and stay there.
Another dramatic escalation in the war in Ukraine, bringing us ever closer to World War Three. Someone has blown up the bridge running from Crimea to Russia. Crimea Bridge partly reopens after a huge explosion in Russia. Now, I'm sure you've all seen the footage by now, but we'll replay it here just to get the scale of it. Absolutely massive. Huge explosion. Took out the train. I think only four people died. It's collapsed the road. The bridge has since reopened, I believe. It's a massive bridge. Biggest bridge in Europe. Now we'll get into the story. Light traffic has resumed on Russia's only bridge to Crimea after a huge blast brought down sections of the roadway. The blast on Europe's longest bridge, a symbol of Russia's annexation of their peninsula from Ukraine in 2014, killed three people, investigators say. The victims of a nearby car when the lorry blew up, Russian officials claim. The railway part of the bridge where the oil tankers caught fire has also apparently reopened. On Saturday evening, Russia's foreign ministry published a video seemingly showing cars using the bridge. Okay, let's... Uh... Yeah, all right. We'll see how that goes. I wouldn't be fucking driving on the cunt. The, uh, the rail and road causing uh, crossing was open in 2018 and is a key supply route for Russia's invasion of the war in Ukraine. An advisor of the UK and President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, Mikhailia Podolak, did not directly claim Ukrainian uh, responsibility, but wrote Crimea... The bridge, the beginning. Everything illegal must be destroyed. Everything stolen must be returned to Ukraine. Everything occupied by Russia must be expelled. Ukraine's defense ministry compared the bridge explosion to the sinking of the Russia's Moscow missile cruiser in April. Two notorious symbols of Russian power in the Ukraine, Crimea, have gone down. It tweeted, what's next in line? The Ukrainian government itself has also simply tweeted, sick burn. They also tweeted today, hey Crimea, what's up? You can see the photos here of the bridge. It took out quite a large section by the looks of it. Russia's foreign ministry said the Kiev regime's reaction towards destruction of civilian infrastructure is a testament to its terrorist nature. In other developments, Ukraine giant Zafariska nuclear plant, which is held by Russian forces, has lost all external power and is relying on emergency diesel generators for the electricity it needs for reactor cooling, according to the Director General of the UN Nuclear Watchdog. Russia has appointed Air Force General Sergei Savokin as the new Russian commander to lead its forces in Ukraine. Russian media accused Ukraine forces of shelling a printing house in the separatist-held city of Donetsk. It is hard to exaggerate the significance and symbolism of seeing the bridge which was opened by President Putin on fire. Russia has used the bridge to move military equipment, ammunition and personnel from Russia to the battlefield south of Ukraine. Such as, U as such, Ukrainian authorities said it was a legitimate target as they vowed to retake the peninsula. Any attack on Crimea where the Russian army has a massive presence will be seen as another massive humiliation for the Kremlin. The bridge is particularly hated by Ukrainian social media and the Ukraine erupted in celebration on seeing the fire one day after the Russian President Vladimir Putin turned 70. Local authorities in Crimea organized a ferry service between the Russian mainland and the peninsula for heavier vehicles that can't use the partially reopened bridge. Russia's National Anti-Terrorism Committee said at 6.07 Moscow time, Today, an explosion was set off at a cargo vehicle on the motorway, part of the Crimean Bridge on the right side of the Taman Peninsula, which set fire to several fuel tanks of a train that was en route to the Crimean Peninsula. 
Two motorway sections of the bridge partially collapsed. Crimean Parliamentary Speaker Vladimir Kononstov blamed the explosion on Ukrainian vandals who haven't managed to reach the bloody hands to the Crimean Bridge. Russian President Vladimir Putin was briefed about the emergency on the bridge and ordered a government inquiry. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said a criminal investigation is also underway. The 19-kilometre bridge across the Kerch Strait cost 12.7 billion euro to build, was opened four years ago after Moscow illegally annexed Crimea. It was hailed by Russian media as the construction of the century. Russian officials previously claimed it was well protected from the threats from air, land or water. As you can see there, it fucking wasn't, obviously. The crossing is more than 100 miles from Ukrainian-held territory. One explosive expert told the BBC the fire was probably not caused by a missile. The lack of obviously bra obvious blast fragment damage from the road surface suggests that the air delivered weapon was not used, he said. He said it was possible that a well-planned attack from below may have seen been the cause. I suspect explosives on the bridge and train deck were initiated near simultaneously using coded radio command, he added. <laughs> Kiev has the momentum in this conflict. The army has reclaimed a large swaths of the territory, forcing Russian troops to abandon long-held positions. Amid the losses, Moscow has begun a chaotic military mobilization which led to a rare anti-war protest in Russia and a huge exodus of military-aged men. I've all seen the videos of the military-aged men fleeing Russia, getting across the border before they get, uh, before they get conscripted. Now... This is obviously going to piss Putin off to the extent where he's started shelling uh, civilian targets in Ukraine, I believe now, apparently. Now, take everything from a grain of salt, uh, with a grain of salt, because there's a lot of misinformation happening on both sides, a lot of propaganda from Russia, a lot of propaganda from Ukraine and the UN and the US. Uh after the Crimea bridge attack, Putin retaliates with a huge missile barrage on residential areas in Zovorizhia, killing at least 17 people coming days after the sim similar attack on civilians. It seems a new signal, a new aim in the southeast destroying the city. Um, as you can see there, that building has been decimated. Now, this is where the bridge is. So, <clears throat> you got Ukraine, Moldova, Romania. The Black Sea, Greece, Russia. Just the sheer size of Russia. That's uh, the war in Ukraine. This is how far away that it was. This is the bridge here. Now, notice something. This is where the explosion was. Right here. In this area. That's a shipping lane there. That's just on Google Maps. So they could have very well had a boat or something along those lines underneath it and blown up. Or at least use that to get to the bridge and plant the explosives without being seen. It's quite a large section of the bridge that has been taken out. But you can see that it's the only bridge that runs from Russia to Crimea. And I don't know if you know much about Russia, but Sevastopol here is usually a massive naval base. Here we go. Yep. Look at that. Feeding the Russian war horse. That is cruise missile carrier. That might even be the fucking ship that they blew up. I'm not too sure. I haven't looked at it very well, but that might be the ship they sunk. Huh. So, obviously, you think that'd be blacked out being... A Russian military base, but uh, no, apparently not. Obviously, that uh, is a very, very uh, big kick in the groin for Russia, that taking out that bridge. So if they can't get equipment across that, they've either got to barge it across, which takes longer and costs a lot more money, obviously, or take it all the way around. 
on rail or something like that. Now, Putin's going to be escalating after that. He's going to see that as like a kick in the groin. He's going to take that personally as, you know, one should, I suppose. But what is happening is it's just escalating into where someone else is going to get dragged into it. Someone else is going to be dragged into the fray. Someone else will be dragged into the fighting. And if the UN or NATO or America gets any more involved than they already are, shit's going to go sideways really quick. It won't take much. Like you read back in that report that they've cut power to the nuclear power plant and it's running on diesel. So when, as soon as they, what if they run out of diesel? If they run out of diesel for those generators, that place will go critical just like Fukushima did. They're not going to fix that anytime soon. Putin's going to take that personally and it's going to escalate again. Not to mention that Ukraine is sitting there on Twitter mocking them. So any form of de-escalation is out the window at this point. No one's trying to de-escalate the situation. Elon Musk came out and had an idea to de-escalate and maybe end the war and he was dragged through the internet yet again and shat on pretty much. He had a poll asking whether he should be, uh, they should, you know, sue for peace or anything like that. And it was pretty much all one-sided. Uh, it came out and he came out and said that it was the largest bot attack he has ever seen. And I believe it. It's, you can't get off the narrative. You can't get off the project uh, trajectory that they've set in place. Anyone who steps off the path gets beaten down, silenced, and shut up. They want World War Three to break out, and at this point, I, I think it's going to. I th honestly do because everything they're pushing for is just escalating. Everything it, it's just going on and on and on they're lighting the fuse they're pour, pour, lighting the fuse they're pouring more diesel on the fire and they're sitting there and throwing rocks at it it's like they're poking the bear they're doing everything they can to start world war three you got biden in the white house who's barely even alive you can't string two sentences together last week he was talking about a dead woman asking where is she she wasn't there because she's fucking dead. Then you see him saying, yeah, no one fucks with the Biden the other day. And then he says, I'll give you two words. And he comes out <laughs> immediately says, made, uh, made in America. It's three fucking words. You had, you had one job, dude. He is out of it. He's not controlling what's going on anyway. It's the White House, whoever that is, whoever's controlling the uh, ministry of 700,000 Ukrainians remain without electricity. Nuclear power plant doesn't have electricity to run its diesel generators. That's not fucking good. If that thing goes off, is that technically Russia nuking Ukraine? Or, you know, what are, what's, what's the UN and EU going to say about that? And if terrorist attack keeps happening, like what happened with the bridge... Russia's going to use that as an excuse and send their full force into Ukraine and not fuck around with their stupid expeditionary force that they sent in there to begin with. It's just a never-ending cycle of everyone poking each other in the eye and that everyone's going to be blind by the end of it. it I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if we see nukes being launched, tactical nukes being launched in the next couple of weeks. No one's de-escalating the situation. Anyone who should be de-escalating the situation is only stirring the pot and sending Ukraine more money and supplies and arguing about what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing, whether they should be escalating the situation or not. No, one's, no one seems to be trying to calm things down. No one seems to be trying to sue for peace, whatever that looks like. I don't know. But World War Three isn't the answer. I don't want to be nuked for some fucking pretty boy Vladimir Zelensky in Ukraine who's been corrupt from the get-go 
has Nazi Azov battalions that everyone seems to have forgotten about for some reason. Like, I completely understand if you're defending your country, I'd be out there too, just like every other Australian. But if it was becoming the end of the war, end of the world, you know, pushing it to the end of the, ending the world, what do you do? Like, they're not going to give up. Ukraine's not going to stop, obviously. They're not going to just quit because they think the world's going to end or they might even think, well, fuck it, if we're going out, we might as well take everyone with us. I, You know, I, I get it. I get it. But someone's going to step in and say enough is enough. So it needs to calm down. I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. That's it's. I just can't see it happening. I can see us getting to World War Three really quick. Russia's bombing civilian targets with S-300 missile launchers. One of those can launch tactical nuke. It's not going to take much. Russia gets put backed into this corner any further. Good news, everyone. You can go and get a new vaccine. I'm being sarcastic if you didn't know. The Moderna bivalent COVID vaccine introduced in Australia. New COVID booster has started rolling out in Australia, which is anticipated to give recipients broader immunity to the deadly virus. They just don't seem to stop, do they? They just keep selling their same old shit, same old shtick. When is it going to end? When are they going to stop handing out these boosters and shit for people? When are people going to stop getting them? I know people that have got six. I've heard of people who've got more. Now they want you to get, what, three to six a year? I think I'll just stick with my good old zero, you know? Fuck that. A new COVID booster shot, which is anticipated to give better and broader protection against the deadly virus, has entered Australia's vaccine rollout. Moderna's new Spikevax bivalent Omicron vaccine is a combination shot comprising equal elements of the original SARS-CoV-2 virus and Omicron BA1 variant. The health department has confirmed it would be integrated into Australia's existing COVID booster program on Mon coming from Monday. Fucking ridiculous. It's never going to end, is it? It's going to be 2030 and we'll still be having booster shots. Well... There's a few sheep that will be having booster shots and there's a few people that um just will never stop doing it, I suppose. It's it's sad, it's infuriating, I'm over it already, I'm sure everyone else is over it. Can we just tell them to go fuck themselves? I don't want to see that word COVID or Moderna or Pfizer, any of those words again for at least 12 months, you know? Just shut up. You can't do anything. You still can't say anything on the internet without getting banned or taken down or shut down on TikTok again. Um, YouTube's pretty much throttling everything. You can't say what you really need to say about vaccines, and we all know what we want to say about it. People are still getting in shit for uh, stuff that happened back in the lockdowns today. So I just don't see when it's going to come to an end. I suppose when World War Three kicks off in a couple of weeks and uh, someone drops a nuke on Ukraine, that's when we'll um, stop hearing about it, probably. <sighs> it is anticipated the shot will provide broad immune protection against the COVID and Omicron subvariants. Fucking bullshit. None of them have. None of them have at, done anything to stop any of it. The Moderna bivalent... Ax vaccine generates a modestly higher level of antibody response against multiple SARS COVID 2 Omicron subvariants, approx approximately 1.6 to 1.9 times, including the BA1 and the BA4, BA5, and a similar antibody response against original virus compared with the Moderna original booster vaccine. The Department of Health and Aged Care said it in a statement in September. It was granted provisional registration by the Therapeutic Goods Administration of Australia last month to use as a booster dose in people aged 18 and older. It is still recommended booster doses should be given to an individual at least three months after their most recent vaccine or previous COVID infection. Every three months, you're supposed to go and get a booster shot. How many people are going to be doing that? I reckon a lot. There's a lot of fucking idiots out there. 
The Moderna bivalent vaccine is only registered for use as a booster shot. It is the first bivalent combination shot to be made available in Australia. The safety of Moderna bivalent vaccine for adults appears to be similar to the original vaccine, according to the Department of Health. So it's similar to the original vaccine. So it does fuck all, just gives you heart palpitations and could possibly kill you. Okay, I ain't getting it. The duration of the protection it provides is unknown. Of course it is. Though that there is a potential it could last for longer. Shouldn't they fucking know this shit before they start injecting into people? They don't know how long the protection lasts, but it could last longer. As of Wednesday last week, 72.2% of the eligible population, people aged 16 years and over, had received their booster dose. Fucking bullshit. Bullshit, 72%. Although, I know a lot of fucking dumb people. Well, I can imagine 72% for like the the, uh, the two shots, but 72% for boosters? Really? Fuck. More than 41% of eligible population, people aged 30 years and over, had also received their fourth dose. I can't believe those numbers. 41% of people aged 30 and over have gone and got their fourth dose. For fuck's sakes, I had COVID a couple of weeks ago. After recovering from surgery for cancer. And I had a shitty cold for a couple of days. Whoopie fucking do. No vaccines. Oh my fucking God. We're never going to get out of it. These people keep lining up for booster shots. That's... The only time we're going to get out of the COVID crap is when people stop lining up to go and get injected with experimental fucking drugs that don't work. I mean, it'd be different if they worked, like 100%. If they worked and they stopped you from getting it and like the disease was a lot worse than it is, I'd be all for it. Even with the risks of like myocarditis, things like that, I'd be all for it. It doesn't fucking work though. You can't go and get a shot every three months. I can't even get a day off every three months for fucking... Doctor's appointments and shit. How are you going to go and get a shot every three months? They're just going to keep... What's Bunnings going to open up like a fucking permanent thing in the car park there next to the fucking sausage sizzle? You can go and get your sausage. You can go and get your fucking... Your Bunnings plants. And you can go and get your booster at the same time. It's never going to end while all these sheep will keep lining up and going and getting it. They're just going to keep making money after fucking fistfuls of money. Just fistfuls. There's... Billions of dollars going into these companies for fucking because of stupid people. They'll put that on emergency release, but they won't ever have like put a cancer or leukemia drug or something that you know that's could help people or could save people's lives. They'll never put that out like they've done this. They'll never have an emergency rollout for that. It's insane. I can't wait to see the end of it. I'm really over it. Anytime you say something that's going to happen on this video, anytime you say something about COVID, you get that little thing that pops up underneath the screen. It says COVID, blah, blah, blah. Would you click here for more information? Same with Facebook. Same with Twitter. Anything like that. It's fucking ridiculous. I'm really over it. It's given... It gives me PTSD. I swear to God. Everything is... They just keep pumping it out and people keep taking it. I just don't get why people keep taking it. Like everyone goes, oh, well, COVID wasn't that bad. You know, some people I know have had it twice and they've got fucking four, four shots in them. Um, some people I know have only had it once and they haven't had any shots like me. I've only had it once. I haven't had it twice like all these other people. And it was fine. It was nothing. It, it was a shitty cold for a couple of days. To be fair, I reckon if you got the original variant, yeah, it probably would have been pretty nasty by the looks of it. But the Omicron is the only one getting around now. And it's down to a common cold. Why are they going and getting booster shots? Why are they still making money off this shit? Especially after all that information has come out about all the dirty shit that Pfizer did, Moderna did, come out that the virus had Moderna DNA strands in it, which is one like... The chances of that happening were like five trillion to one. 
people are still getting take kicked off the internet for talking about this shit. Get over it. Like, I hope maybe when there's a new election in the US, maybe when World War Three kicks off, it'll people will stop talking about it. People will stop selling it. But I don't know. I don't see the end of it coming anytime soon. I'd just like to be able to log onto a website or go to a tweet or watch a YouTube video or listen to a Spotify uh, podcast without having that little fucking thing saying, oh, COVID misinformation. Click here for your uh, so you can get told what the government wants you to hear. Fucking really over it. What about you? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, tell me one retribution!